There has been a message perpetuated around the ecosystem that landing a Salesforce role is easy. Just land your admin, sir, and the doors will open. This notion has been spread by Salesforce with their trailblazer movement, community visas, MVPs, and yes, even yours truly. The reality is that this was somewhat true for many years. Salesforce was a relatively unknown career option with surging demand and a trickling talent pool of supply. The status quo of today, however, couldn't be more different. An increasingly complex platform mixed with an oversaturation of talent signals that the age of easy Salesforce careers could be over. I landed my first Salesforce admin role at 120 user org using Sales and Service Cloud. I had three months of experience on the Salesforce platform at a graduate training program I'd just left and had recently landed my admin cert. I was paid £30,000. I was mainly required to work out of a ticketing system, fielding questions and requests from users, and making sure the general health of the system was optimal. I would occasionally engage with stakeholders from across the business to tackle more complex issues such as solutionizing and building new business processes on Salesforce. Using my limited knowledge and building directly in production, I got by using page layout, record types, custom object, workflow rules and reports and dashboards to field requirements from the business. Since I landed that job in early 2013, the landscape of Salesforce, its products, and its ecosystem have changed so much. Salesforce's plan for their customers has always been to drive massive digital transformation. Workflow rules, some custom fields, and a page layout isn't enough to achieve this. Customers need integration, they need marketing automation, specialist products such as Field Service Lightning or CPQ, and deployment processes such as DevOps. In other words, complexity. Whilst I don't want to diminish the accomplishments of anyone who has landed the Salesforce job in recent years by passing a stiffication and perhaps working on a portfolio to showcase their experience, it's kind of too good to be true, isn't it? Revise for a few months and land a $70,000 job which can rapidly climb after a few years? Well, if something's too good to be true, it probably is, but technically wasn't for many years. Salesforce has the unique attributes of being a company that grew from 2 billion in revenue in 2012 when I started my career to over 30 billion in 2023, whilst also staying under the radar to most as being a viable career choice. As you can see from the growth in Salesforce admin jobs via Google Trends in the chart, the search has recently hit an all-time high, but has been slowly building over many years. Salesforce announced Trailhead at Dreamforce 2014, which kick-started the Trailblazer movement and opened up the Salesforce education to anyone, regardless of education or background. Aside from the noble mission of opening up technology education to everyone, I think it's safe to say the Salesforce ecosystem needed more talent at that time, and Trailhead was the answer. From 2014, you can see a measurable impact in the search for Salesforce admin jobs, and it's safe to say that Trailhead is and continues to be a huge driving force in democratizing technology education. To many candidates and recruiters that I speak to, they regard 2021 and 2022 as the year that the Salesforce job market really peaked. The COVID-19 pandemic drove a wave of digital transformation projects, and as the world opened back up, technology projects were the highest priority for businesses. Luckily for many candidates that were waiting on the sidelines after skilling up on Trailhead and landing their admin stification, this surge in demand drove a hiring spree. It was also the time when companies were willing to pay whatever it took to secure candidates. I heard a few stories of large consultancies paying over £100,000 to candidates with two years of experience or less. Whilst this must have been amazing for the candidates and I applaud them for securing the job, these kind of salaries aren't sustainable. These years of peak Salesforce job inflation were also where the rise of Salesforce boot camps came into play. Essentially training programs that cost thousands of dollars, seducing you with the allure of a six-figure salary in tech that you can shortcut with their program. These types of programs rely on creating the impression that it's easy to land a tech job. After the technology boom of the COVID years with tech companies thinking this growth could carry on forever, reality came knocking. War broke out, inflation rose, interest rates were hiked, and growth slowed down. For the first time in nearly a decade, Salesforce's growth slowed from 20 to 35% each quarter, down to nearly single digits. This led to layoffs and tightening of budgets across the board. TechCrunch reported that 262,000 layoffs occurred in the technology industry in 2023, with 2024 not kicking off much better. These layoffs have also directly impacted the Salesforce ecosystem. 
with Salesforce laying off 7,000 employees in 2023 and a slew of layoffs from app exchange companies and consultancies that are continuing at the moment. Unfortunately, end users have been affected too. One Salesforce admin I spoke with in the US had just started his Salesforce career at a large software company when budget cuts came into effect. Another Salesforce product manager with nearly a decade of experience was laid off along with two of her direct reports, leaving just one admin to run a highly compact Salesforce org. For the first time, possibly ever, Salesforce roles are being hit and being hit hard. If the golden years of the Salesforce job market boom are over, what is the reality of searching for a job in 2024? There are a few factors at play here that will make 2024 and possibly beyond a little tricky. Firstly, we have the global economy and budget restrictions on companies that hold the purse strings for these roles. Whilst everyone is feeling more positive at the start of 2024, this is yet to translate into actual growth. Secondly, layoffs and saturation at an entry level have created an unprecedented amount of talent in the Salesforce ecosystem. 10K, a Salesforce advisory company, reported that whilst demand was down by 46% in 2023, the supply of Salesforce professionals grew by 28%. This is why when applying to many Salesforce roles, you will often be competing against hundreds of other candidates. In the words of Max Goodger, recruitment consultant at Investigo, when you have a huge injection of people entering the ecosystem but the amount of opportunities halve, it makes for a hyper-competitive marketplace. Thirdly, and possibly most importantly, customer demands and expectations have shifted. This is the combination of the two factors above, as well as the complexity of the Salesforce platform increasing. Customers no longer want or need a Ben McCarthy-style admin from 2013, who might have landed a 50 to 60 k job in the boom era of 2022. They need a multi-cloud admin who is a wizard with flow, has integration experience, and preferably marketing plus CPQ experience. And when customers are spawned for choice with hundreds of applicants applying for the same role with varying breadths of experience, they'll make sure they get the best bang for their buck in the age of belt tightening. Even a Salesforce CTA reached out to me who frustratedly explained that it's been hard for her to find a role that matched her salary expectations, citing an increase in offshoring, tightening of budgets, and a lack of projects. Another factor that is restricting candidates' choice of roles is that remote roles are hard to come by. While Salesforce was one of the first enterprise businesses to announce that they would be fully remote after COVID-19 struck, they have since had a change of heart amongst many other businesses in ensuring that employees are at least in the office a few days a week. Ivan, who is an 11-year Salesforce ecosystem veteran, has seen the same trend in the Czech Republic for Salesforce consultancies. He says whilst the market has shrunk significantly with budget restrictions, buyers have become much more educated and they want resources who are based in the local market, with specific expectations regarding experience. He says if you don't specialise, then you're out of the game. Ivan's wife also had experience trying to get into the Salesforce market through a Salesforce-sponsored training programme, but had to pivot to an adjacent IT market due to a lack of demand. However, it's clear that your job search will depend on your experience and specializations. The Salesforce admin who is laid off from a large software company has just had over a year of experience in total, but has struggled to land a job in over four months, despite many interviews where the number of applications have been above 100. However, the Salesforce product manager with nearly a decade of experience had relatively little stress in landing the next role. Overall, the market has changed drastically and rapidly in the past couple of years, and it's hard to see a fast path back to prosperity. After promoting a career in Salesforce to my blog followers, friends, family, and even girlfriend, I fear the glory days of landing a relatively easy Salesforce job are over. The narrative that there is a huge demand, not enough supply, and the fact that anyone with an admin cert will get hired just isn't true anymore. As Salesforce and many other technology companies pivot from a grow at all cost mentality to focus on profitability, we may not see the hyper-competitive Salesforce job market level out with a large swing in Salesforce growth anytime soon. It's important to remember that the growth of Salesforce is made up of multiple products. Some of these products will grow at faster rates than others, and it's the older core products such as Sales and Service Cloud that are lagging behind the likes of Tableau, MuleSoft, and Data Cloud. This chart further supports the argument that has started to emerge that the only surefire way to stand out from the massive crowd in the Salesforce ecosystem is to specialize either through products or through industry knowledge. For example, in a recent LinkedIn discussion, I asked my network what are the hot roles in the industry right now. 
the usual suspects pop up in the form of Revenue Cloud, CPQ, Marketing Cloud, Field Service Lightning, and MuleSoft. One individual did point out that he is still getting multiple jobs sent to his inbox each week, which doesn't signal a change in demand. But he has over 10 years of experience on the sales platform, further supporting the argument that if you are experienced and specialized, your job search will be much easier. Matt Hafford is a specialist sales source recruiter and business owner that focuses on niche markets. And he tells me that candidates who are experienced in products such as Revenue Cloud or MuleSoft probably have a 0% unemployment rate, simply due to the demand and the lack of skilled candidates out there in the market. The generalist versus specialist argument is something that continues to develop in the Salesforce ecosystem and beyond in separate markets. Andrew Reiser, CEO of Mounting Point, a gold Salesforce partner, goes on to say in his article, as the ecosystem becomes oversaturated, generalist offerings begin to feel commoditized, losing their edge in the sea of similar solutions, which seemingly could apply to candidates, consultancies, and app exchange apps. Similar trends are happening in the media space. Whilst generalist publications such as Sports Illustrated, Vice, and BuzzFeed are on the decline, niche or specialist online publications are thriving. Some may accuse me of gatekeeping that is, protecting the ecosystem from new entrants to keep salaries and demand high, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I've always been a huge advocate for new entrants to enter the ecosystem for years, and whilst it'd be pretty easy to continue doing so, the mood has changed, and I feel the content I produce needs to reflect that in order to better prepare people for the reality of the job market, or at least make people question the current narrative with facts. So if you are holding out for that elusive first role in the Salesforce ecosystem and have been trying for months or maybe years to no avail, it may be time to switch up tact. This may come in the form of applying to different types of roles, for example, switching from a Salesforce admin to sales or RevOps, business analysis, or customer success roles in ISVs. It may come in the form of switching to an adjacent technology. Salesforce isn't the only technology around. There are plenty of other declarative platforms out there that don't require coding, such as Zendesk, HubSpot, Microsoft Dynamics, and Tableau. If you've built up core foundation in knowledge about CRM and business processes working on a Salesforce role, much of this will be transferable to a potentially less saturated industry. Does your previous industry experience mean that you could specialize in a particular vertical, such as non-profit or financial services? Could you even look to gain CRM experience in your current role before going out to the Salesforce market to switch roles? Or based on the current saturation of the Salesforce market and the uncertainty of when things are gonna bounce back, do you give yourself a break and free up your evening and weekends to focus on something other than tech careers? Many content creators in the ecosystem continue to push the narrative that it's easy to get a Salesforce role. Simply get certified, volunteer a bit, and the jobs will come. Whilst it's great fun creating this type of content and there's a feel-good factor in knowing you are helping others, I don't think it reflects what most people are seeing on the ground. It's hard to know what the future holds for the Salesforce ecosystem job market, especially those who are just starting out their careers. Could we see another boom with artificial intelligence being the catalyst, or will AI create even deeper specializations within the Salesforce market that makes returning to the generalist days impossible? If you have any questions after watching this video, or you simply want some advice, I've set up a new inbox to answer your questions. Feel free to reach out to advice at salesforceben.com.